Good afternoon, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. There's lots of talk on the internet as to which is the most effective TRT protocol. As you guys know, we subscribe to microdosing. That's using the minimum effective dose in the correct way to achieve the desired outcome, which is what? Stable male androgen levels. So the most effective way of doing this is daily subcutaneous testosterone sipinate and HCG injections. If this does not work, you can use shallow intramuscular injections. Which cohort of patients do subcutaneous injections not support? Well, typically those with connective tissue disorders. And a few of my guys are that thin that they can't do subcutaneous injections. Disappointingly, I'm not. <laughs> there are also a few people who do not feel stable with daily testosterone sipinate injections. Why? Well, these guys tend to have single figure SHBG levels. Now, as you guys know, SHBG is a buffer. So the half-life of testosterone, estrogen and DHT is very short and you need it to bind to SHBG for this sustained prolonged release. So, where is the dilemma? What, where, is, where is the issue? Well, there is no issue. Some people don't like the idea of doing daily injections. Now, why not? Well, because it's painful. Actually, subcutaneous injections are essentially painless you're injecting with a 29 gauge insulin syringe. It really is painless. You might get a little prick every once in a while as you pinch a nerve. You might even get a little bleed from the capillary that you've just punctured. But it is very, 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 very minuscule in comparison to intramuscular injections. So, man up treacle, over 900 of my patients are doing subcutaneous daily injections. And after every single first injection in clinic, they go, oh, is that it? Yeah, I did tell you, but the proof is in the pudding. Now, some guys don't want the inconvenience of doing daily injections. So my retort to that would be, do you brush your teeth? Do you have a shower? It literally becomes part of your daily routine. So I don't actually want you thinking about testosterone replacement therapy. I want you to do what? I want you to get on with life. So if there is no thought process and this is part of your daily routine, you can concentrate on what's important. Other things. Leave the medicine to me. You do not need to be preoccupied with whether you should up your dose, decrease your dose, add in this, add in that, subtract that. Leave the medicine to me. Some guys inject on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday because physiology likes a break at the weekend. Um, you may feel okay with that protocol, but physiology does not take a break at the weekend. So, Testosterone, <laughs> uh, it follows a diurnal pattern. So surely you want to have stable male androgen levels every single day, not take the weekend off. Um, oh, honestly. Now it's not to say you can't feel good and even potentially great with different TRT protocols. Now here at the Men's Health Clinic, we have access to every single testosterone preparation available. That includes PROP, uh, which is a stupid, stupid ester to use for testosterone replacement therapy. It's used by athletes because it's out of your system quickly so they can avoid detection. We have access to Sustanon. <laughs> One, two, five every five days. <laughs> uh, no thanks. Prop, prop, prop. Uh, and the decanoate ester makes side effects an absolute pain in the butt for dose adjustment. It literally is a stupid substance to use for testosterone replacement therapy. 
unless you're doing daily injections. You can't do them sub Q because of the high benzoyl alcohol content. So why bother? Because you're gonna to have to adjust your protocol. You're gonna to have to likely control estrogen. And remember, less is more. So, Nibido. I do have a few people on Nibido, but they are weekly microdosing. Why? Because you have to have an understanding of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. Now, it's not to say you cannot feel good with an NHS protocol. I mean, shock horror, you could actually feel well with a protocol of 1000 milligrams of Nibido every 12 weeks. You will be an outlier, but you can feel good. Now it all comes down to expectations. Now testosterone replacement therapy does exactly what it says on the tin. It replaces the testosterone that you're deficient in. How is it supposed to make you feel? Well, it's not really supposed to make you feel anything, is it? It's just replacing a hormone that is deficient. Now you do have or likely have negative symptoms as a result of having a deficiency. These can range from serious things such as low mood and even suicidal ideation to just wanting to get your leg over. The quantitative markers do not indicate the level of severity of your symptoms. So testosterone replacement therapy, normalizing your male androgen levels is literally to give you the foundations to do what? I bang on about this all day, every day, to go earn your reward. Nothing more, nothing less. So when it boils down to it, what should you do? You should do what's comfortable for you, the individual, but you should listen to people who are objective and who have no interest in selling you a false lie. Now I do turn away a lot of patients from my clinic. Why? Because I don't believe they actually need testosterone replacement therapy. So after a thorough blood diagnostic workup, I often suggest that they go away and look to thyroid, look to lower SHBG, look to address lifestyle factors, diet and exercise if they haven't done so already. Because what I don't want you to do is to go on to TRT prematurely. Testosterone replacement therapy is a lifelong commitment. It's not to say you cannot come off of TRT and go back to how you feel right now, but why would you? If you feel worse, why do you feel worse? Because if your doctor is any good, he has normalized your male androgen levels. So the reason for your discord is elsewhere. Often it is because there is an element of your lifestyle, your diet or your exercise that is not in check. It can be due to another pathology such as hypothyroidism. And there was often obviously a neuroendocrine dysregulation that is a very specialized field that we are moving into because we're working with a lot of special forces guys who have had traumatic brain injury. And we've been exploring this more and more. What you need to have is a holistic approach to your therapy, to your life and your continued prosperity.